Erica, shall I take yeah, it away? Sure. away? Yes, please do. All righty. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And greetings to uh, folks in person there uh, at Union Campus. Tell you what, let's let's do some technical logistical testing first. If you can hear me clearly in the room there, please wave because I've got eyes on you. Everybody wave if you can hear me fine. Thank you. I won't speak any louder than that. That's terrific. A um, couple of other points of business here as we start out today in our uh, hybrid meeting. Welcome to everybody who's online. Actually, folks in person, all of us online, we're actually at a Buffalo Wild Wings uh, up on the north side. So uh, we're having a similar experience to you, just a different location. Uh, Ron Ayers, I want to recognize you. When I started this meeting at 5 p.m., Ron was in the was standing around in the virtual waiting room. And I know he was standing there because we don't have budget to buy chairs for the virtual waiting room. So, Ron, congratulations. You win some type of award for that. And one other new feature for this meeting, never before conducted or, or attempted, uh, I call it word from the board bingo. All righty, here's how you play, everybody. There are four board members. One of them is going to have a feature uh, presentation spot in today's agenda. Can you guess who it is? So if you're online, head to the chat window there. And if you're in the room, take out a piece of paper and a pencil if you still carry those things, or maybe your phone, open notepad up there. Uh, if you're not sure the board members, who they are, I'll remind you, I'll give you a little tip this time. Casey, Erica, Kelly, Galen. I, I have a cheat sheet that I get to use for that. Okay, so you can pick who's who's going to be your, your word from the board uh, pres presenter today. And now we will jump to uh, the announcements, the vaunted announcements. All righty, we got them going up here. Uh, I've already been welcoming everybody back. Thanks to those that are virtual as well. Um, we are at, in a growing year, and we welcome your feedback from surveys. The really important part of this slide that you see here, look on the right-hand side. We've got events coming up. June, we're carrying out. Why don't you all remember, July, we're giving kind of a summer break to people. We'll be back in August. September, drop down to the bottom half of that orange bar there. It's Pro Dev Day. Um, actually, it's split between two days. So you want to be holding September 15th and 16th for that. Pro Dev Day. And then we return to kind of regular programming in October and November with our third Wednesday sessions. Hey, you know, I've done a lot of welcoming already, and I want to welcome these dozen new members uh, if you happen to be listed here and you're in the room, stand up and wave at everybody. And if you're online, introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, we'd like to greet you. Welcome new members. We also want to welcome these five people to the ranks of being newly certified. All right. So congratulations to these five folks. And again, we'd like to share your celebration. And congratulations to you for that. Uh, on to kind of the more traditional announcements. If you're a volunteer, an appreciation event is scheduled for July the 16th. You want to get your phones out and you want to hold the evening of July the 16th right now. More details coming up on that later this program. Did you know that you can actually attend and even submit questions or considerations for walk-in topics to our board of directors? They meet first Wednesday of every month starting at 6.15 Eastern time. Um, you probably know this if you've been to these sessions, but remember, ensure you're signed up to auto renew your annual membership so you don't lose your chapter benefits for a period of time in there. We will continue to have surveys uh, published and available to you at the end of the events. If you're in person in the room, I believe that will get sent to you via a uh, courtesy email with a link. And we appreciate and do read every one of the surveys and take action from the results that are there. And it's now time for word from the board bingo. Okay, this is where the board members kind of faint. Some of them may stand up and approach that. Well, okay, if you picked Erica Perley, you win today. Our word from the board this month, Erica Perley, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Eric, the podium is yours. Thanks, Rich. Good evening, everyone. And thank you again for this opportunity to briefly share a few words. Um, we are coming to the close of the first half of the year and a great deal has been accomplished, but we also still have so much more we want to accomplish before the end of 2022. Uh, we'll be taking, obviously, as you heard Rich say, taking a summer break for the third Wednesday program in July and picking back up in August and then have our Pro, day, Pro Dev Day conference immediately after that in September. 
Additionally, we also are planning for a couple of members to attend our Leadership Institute meeting with the PMI Global, uh, which is going to be in Las Vegas in November. And then we also have elections in November as well. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to put those in your mind, a uh, future thing that uh, you can look forward to and, and possibly participate in. We also hope to continue to find uh, partnerships throughout the academic community, military groups, and many other communities throughout the central Indiana area. Uh, through all of this, we continue to rely on our many diverse members to join us in volunteering for to offer our great services and support and resources to the, to the community. Um, I want to remind everyone that PMI CIC understands that it is our responsibility to build and advocate and advance local diversity, equity, and inclusion. It is the center of what we do. Recognizing that we are members of a global project management community, we strive to ensure belonging, respect, and appreciation. As a professional growth organization, we commit to learning and relearning how to contribute to create a more just society and advancing PMI's global purpose. So we support our LGBTQ plus members as we join in the celebration of Pride Month and we honor the fight for freedom as we celebrate Juneteenth, Juneteenth next week. We know that our greatest advantage as a project management team managing projects of any kind in any industry comes from our diversity and more than just diversity of thought, true diversity by representation defined by race, gender identity, sexual orientation, religious preference, cultural heritage, age, physical ability and neurodiversity, as well as any other forgotten, please forgive me, but please include them as well. In our chapter, all are welcome members, and we encourage you to join us in building a safe, equitable, and inclusive community. On that note, I want to actually share the floor briefly with a couple of new volunteer leads who are assisting with the upcoming event in July. Um, we are seeking to recognize a few of our members in this event and their contributions to our community. So. I'll call on Daria Vaughn, a member from our membership committee, as well as Cheryl Perkins, who's actually joining us virtually as our director of volunteers. So Rich, I'm not sure if you are able to elevate Cheryl. Uh, now would be the time to do so. And Daria, if you wouldn't mind standing and sharing a little bit about this event coming up in July. Well, sure. Thank you, Erica, for sharing your time with us tonight and allowing us um, an opportunity to share about the event. So. Rich did steal my thunder, but that's okay. <laughs> um, please hold your calendars for July 16th because we're going to have the new member welcome and volunteer appreciation event for y'all. For all the hard work, we definitely appreciate you. Again, that's going to be July 16th, and it's going to be Symphony uh, on the Prairie. It's Kroger's sponsored Symphony on the Prairie, uh, July 16th at 7 p.m. at Common Prairie. So we are very excited and can't wait to see you. Cheryl, are you on? Can you hear me? There she is. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Okay, I think I'm frozen on my video, so I'm sorry. Um, but hi, my name is Cheryl Perkins, and I just want to say welcome, and we're glad that you are attending today and that we do have a um, volunteer appreciation that is coming up in July. We're really excited about it. And we hope to see you there and please spread the word. And I hope you have a great time tonight. Thank you. All right. Thank you both for sharing those details and I'll turn things back over to you, Rich. Thank you much, Erica. All righty, we move on to the uh, we move on to the uh, grayscale slide. Um, but you know, you and the audience in, in person in the room there, it's great that I'm able to see you. You did so well with the audience participation piece earlier. We're going to replicate that now. So, tell me this: if you believe that PMI members uh, have honesty, responsibility, respect, and fairness as the values that drive ethical conduct for the project management profession, raise your hand if you agree with that statement there in the room. All righty, Casey, you could take down the names of those that, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, all work presented will be the intellectual property of the presenters. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by the speaker belong solely to the speaker, not necessarily those of PMI or PMICIC. And if you understand that, raise your hands in the room. You know, it's, it's not an oath or anything. Okay, the last thing we want, the unauthorized reproduction, distribution, of copyrighted work is illegal and punishable under federal law. I checked since last month. It's still the case this month. 
all righty so let's all behave and now finally what you're here for this evening's featured speaker is Pratik Kari Helia, Engagement Director with Tata Consultancy Services. Over the last... And wait, there's more. <laughs> Over the last several years, Pratik has obtained valuable experience as an Agile and DevOps transformation consultant, an enterprise Agile coach, and engagement owner for enterprise agility and global PMOs. He is a co-founder of a platform for Agile enthusiasts to collaborate Agilance.org, and he'll correct me if I mispronounce that. Today, Pratik will share his insights on the continuously involved project manager, technologies project managers should know in the age of DevOps. Now, please join me, everybody, in welcoming to the podium, Pratik Parhelia. So am I audible? Is it good, louder? OK, perfect. So I just got carried away. I just want to introduce myself again. So my name is Karhelia Prati Karhelia because the referral ticket has a 007. This is the win win which I got. So that's Bond, James Bond joke, yeah. <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which I just made. OK, all right. So let's move quickly. I just skip my introduction. So yeah, you got it right. Agilience is, uh, I thought that allegiance to agile would be a good, good cool word for, for agilience. So that's how I created. But yeah, I'm working as a director of project management services and uh, enterprise agility services with Tata Consultancy Services. I have more than 15 years of experience, four years in Indianapolis, south side, with my wife and my six-year-old daughter. Before that, I was in UK and a lot of time in, in India. Uh, I'm, I did my CMP in 2014, so, so way back. After that, I transitioned slightly into Agile with uh, Scrum Master and STC. And recently, I did my ICP, ACP as well. But a big uh, uh, change in my uh, kind of our knowledge space, which I made, is uh, just learning towards DevOps. So I'm a Microsoft Azure certified uh, engineer expert. So I have been part of several consulting assignments where you need to you know, bring DevOps into picture. Uh, some bragging about education and others, but I'm going to just skip this one. So uh, just a little about my presentation style. Uh, I would uh, normally keep it simple in a very plain language. So a uh, few of the purists may not agree with me, <laughs> but that is okay. Uh, and whatever I normally share is a walkable. So I try to suggest things which are very, very practical, pragmatic. So if I say something and which you think that, okay, in my organization or in my experience, that is not, not practically possible. Uh, it's all a crap, whatever I'm saying. So please do challenge me and we can have a good conversation. Another thing I try to do is connecting the dots. So I know we have a very good uh, participation here, but everybody has a different experience, different background. I try that, uh, you know, whenever I say something, I try to connect to the dots with whatever my understanding of this group is, because I am also a project management professional. A lot of people, you also have the similar background. So I try to do, do that. Okay, so what is in agenda today and what is not? So we are going to cover the building uh, building blocks uh, level knowledge of DevOps. So that is one thing we are going to cover. And the more importantly, as a project manager, again, when I'm saying the word project manager, it loosely means any leader. You can be a project manager, scrum master, coach, anybody who wants to uh, you know, lead something, complete a project. So that's why I'm using the word project manager, but I mean everybody, whoever is present in this room. Uh, so how they can be continuously involved with their teams because that is the need of the hour. So that is what we are going to cover. And uh, we'll also cover understanding of the technology landscape and that is being a, a Microsoft Azure engineer expert. So that is a very technological role. So I'm going to cover some of the technologies part of it because that will help you when you have a conversation with your team, it's gonna help. And most importantly, I'm going to share a few quick resources. You can just open your phone or your laptop and share. If you go through those quick resources where the, you can you know just enhance your knowledge. Today is not a crash course on DevOps. So there are a lot of things in 40 odd minutes. We cannot complete everything. Uh, I'm not going to advocate any particular tool. So, and I don't know all the tools anyway. So tool specific q and I, I just uh, open google.com here. <laughs> and if there's a question, I'm gonna just search over here. So just assume, uh, so, so this, is, this is the today's agenda. 
but more importantly why do i need to care for it you attending to this session a fine evening you are spending here so why you really need to care for it so let's quickly talk about that i go to score thing yeah so devops the dynamics of the industries are changing so uh, waterfall you all know what is waterfall the releases were happening you know in a quarter years kind of a timelines people were discussing it ever since in 2001 agile came into picture now people are talking about weeks months to release something but with devops coming into picture it's like days and continuous i have i was part of one team they were releasing like 40 50 times per week they were the kind of releasing those features patches hot uh, uh, hot fixes so that is one thing we need to understand when we say 40 times releasing it's not means 40 features are coming or the 40 Uh, user stories it can be anything but ultimately at the end of the day you are releasing it right so the dynamics are changing people are talking about continuous delivery so that is where you know it's important for us as a project management professional to understand the dynamics of devops so why it is important it's important to stay relevant companies are changing technologies are changing new ways of working are there so i'm i believe that with today's quick session you will have some understanding to stay relevant in those uh, changing dynamics so that is the whole intent all right and another thing there is a entire paradigm shift uh, it should be every company is a software company i think of the book uh, 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 actually says that but i just loosely wrote it as technology company but now there is a big challenge the retail pharmaceutical they don't have a challenge uh, competition with their peers they have a challenges with the uh, with the technologies companies like the amazons or the teslas or the uh, googles of the world microsoft so uh, say it's a watch or it's a car the main challenge is coming from outside of the industry because all those companies are technology companies so this is really important paradigm is shifting so we just need to you know it's very 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 important to stay relevant second focus is on to deliver value quickly the quickly is the keyword here i mean you can definitely deliver deliver the value but how quickly you can deliver that is the focus so that is another shift in the paradigm which is happening you cannot wait for you know 6 months to release a feature or something so devops is actually continuously enabling this change so this is the reason we all are here today to understand the basics about devops and how as a project manager you, you can be continuously involved or if you don't care about uh, dynamics changing or paradigm changing as a leader you know that everybody in your organization team is going super fast continuous 50 times in a week whatever continuous releases as a leader if you can just tell them that they are in a right direction or not so this i like this uh, dilbert kind of a uh, image that you know everybody is saying that uh, we are moving super fast good good but the bad news is that they are going in a wrong direction so as a leader if if you can have that kind of a vision so i think uh, this is the very least we should care i mean as a project management professional so be the compass for this fast uh, fast moving bus which is i <coughs> i uh, intentionally did not use the word train ever since safe come into picture <laughs> so i just use the word bus over here all right so what is devops so dev is uh, one part and ops is one part just i am assuming a quick role here maybe i am a dev guy and rich is a ops guy let's see if we can work better together if we are not able to uh, it will be uh, a good story to tell <laughs> if we are able to it will be a very good story to tell in the next sessions all right but before that i just want everybody to just take a deep breath let's be a little bit philosophical for a second so there are various versions of this this actual uh, quote i mean the only absolute truth is that there are no absolute truths and this is really important so this is very very uh, important for devops whatever you learn today there is a 20 30% chance that when you have another conversation with somebody you'll say that okay prateek said something else and this is something else but it is fine so this is really important don't get stuck with the definition of devops because it came in 2010 or so and things are changing fast and more and more things are getting added but the larger organization now are i mean this change is just has has happened last couple of years 
large organizations are now coming up with some kind of a definition of devops i'm not going to read all the definition but in crux everybody is understanding that devops is the people process product technology everything and to deliver the value to quickly i mean safe has a very good definition but it is complex to remember they talks about you know uh, technical things also like develop test deploy but they also talk about the cultural part of it like communication integration and uh, you know automation kind of a thing so again these definitions are good to read but feel free to you know just uh, take a piece of paper write your own uh, definition of devops talk to your team whatever their expectations are add that also in your definition so i just wanted to add these definition on a slide so that you know that even the larger organizations they don't have a standard way of defining devops so let alone uh, an individual person like me or anybody but i created my own definition anyway <laughs> so just uh, request everybody motivate everybody to come together and deliver desired uh, uh, you know value faster and call whatever good bad things you are doing call this as a devops so that is my simple definition just as a leader motivate everybody let's work together deliver the value to our users to our customers and put a level that it is it is a devops but i am pretty sure that you have not spent the uh, you're not spending your fine evening for this kind of a philosophical gyan you want some something uh, uh, credible information here so let's now talk a little bit more uh, uh, you know about uh, devops so devops typically so i have divided the description of devops in three segments what it typically encompasses that is one second what are the dimensions of devops and third how you measure the success of devops because that is really important no matter what endeavor you are doing if you have no way of measuring the success of it i mean uh, there's no point of doing it right you are just running but you have to measure the success of your run or whatever so 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 that is the third uh, section which i have added so devops typically encompasses three things building right things and if you are from a jail background this may be a redundant information i am pretty sure but the the foundational things remain same building right things whatever things you are building whether they are right or not whether that is something which your your user actually needs second is building things right or not are you as per your compliance your processes whatever your enterprises uh, processes are so that is second thing and third is deliver those things which so if anybody asks you what devops encompasses in general so these are the uh, three uh, three things if any of you have been ever part of a transformation whether it's a agile transformation or digital transformation normally we start with some kind of a dimensions right people or maybe ways of working culture tools and automation so similarly devops also have dimension it all started with a camps model then safe came up with a calmer model but devops is normally when you address these dimensions that is a general understanding that you are addressing devops so first is culture uh, second is automation which is a lot about tools and third is lean uh, reducing the uh, waste uh, fourth is really important measurement devops is all about measurement so whether you are measuring or not and uh, the next one is sharing sharing is about collaboration you know you know if there's a dev team or there's a ops team are you sharing between uh, each other your knowledge your ways of working those kind of a thing and safe has come with a, a recovery also if something fails into production how soon you can recover to a better state so that is what is safe is but this dimension i would strongly recommend uh, uh, this is good for the approach but uh, as a as a devops practitioner but sometimes uh, you know uh, this becomes too much you think that okay i have to address culture also or automation also but it is good to you know uh, uh, kind of have a high level understanding of uh, these are the following dimensions mm -hmm. this is uh, uh, if any of you are referring the devops state of reports which we are going to uh, kind of uh, you know cover uh, in one of the subsequent slides now devops state of report for last few years they have started to uh, have a focus on the success of the devops and this is really important so they have defined few parameters few things uh, it can be different for your own organization but generally in industry these are the four five points uh, like deploy deployment frequency uh, faster time to market uh, lower failure rates uh, shorter lead times and improved recovery time but again there's the catch 
these terms actually looks like uh, uh, they are very technical but they are all are driven by those dimensions take the example of a uh, uh, faster time to market so if your dev team and operation teams are not on a same ways of working or a culture then you won't be able to achieve faster time of a market similarly deployment frequency if your operations teams is not ready to quickly deploy you won't be able to achieve deployment frequency the reason these uh, by purpose these uh, metrics are defined as a more of a technical metrics because these are easier to report i mean if uh, you have to report on a improvement in culture it's a, it's a very diff difficult task in organization there are frameworks around how to report improvement in a culture and that is directly linked to the number of new communication channels you are opening how efficient those communication channels are how efficient how people are reusing your artifacts the moment you start collecting those data points which organizations are not you can actually report improvements in culture but that's i mean for a larger organization it is difficult so by uh, intentionally these are called dora metrics uh, and uh, so intentionally they are made as a like a technical metric so i'm going to take a break so that i can take a sip of water but if there are any questions i'll be uh, happy to answer or reach if there are questions online yeah checking on line here i'll uh, take a comment um on this observation a real challenge for an organization becomes a consistent definition of continuous delivery practices for that organization but then that becomes fluid as efforts and project deadlines rapidly approach and then do not appear to be met it's kind of an observation by one of our there we go thank you <laughs> there it is on screen So if you could comment on this comment. Yeah, I'm just reading. Yeah, so that is, uh, so we are going to cover the continuous delivery pipeline in one of the slide. And that is what is happening in the industry. A lot of uh, tools are coming, which you can just simply plug and play in your existing continuous delivery pipeline. So it's not exactly that you have to create a microservices architecture from the scratch you get a tool and that tool can be plugged into your continuous delivery pipeline and can you know help you become that technology company but again i totally agree with the point you know uh, every company wants to be a technology company but they you know it, it's a journey because their end product was never a technology product right if you are making drugs or you are making car so or, or any you know kind of a retail products you may have but uh, uh, and we talk about the tools. So a lot of those tools are helping, you know, uh, becoming into a microservice. I feel this is getting too technical. So I just that would be my comment. So. Thanks, Pratik. I'll keep monitoring. That's the only one we had for uh, online so far. All right. Yeah. Okay. This I read one book, and this is a, a really good I, a, a kind of a snippet I want to share on the DevOps culture. The book is uh, DevOps Adoption by Sanjeev Sharma. So this, uh, so that person had a conversation with one of the leader in the way uh, that person, the leader defined the DevOps culture as that it is everybody's responsibility. So if he ever has to, uh, to print a t-shirt, like, you know, DevOps responsibility, he would give to everybody, whether like the, you know, designers or the PMO people or the CFO to approve the budgets on time. Even the, the facilities people who are, you know, just keeping everything intact so that people can quickly, you know, get onto their job and working. So everybody, it is so the crux is that it is everybody's responsibility uh, to deliver to production quicker. And that is what is the DevOps uh, culture. The reason I wanted to bring in that when you have conversation with your, uh, your teams, it is good anecdote to share. Somebody may say that, okay, I am just a super supervisor you know i don't care you deliver the product uh, but you can tell you know it is everybody's responsibility being a part of the uh, devops culture all right so so far i was just uh, referring to the uh, you know cultural part of it uh, in a large organization on devops uh, but if you google around or if you talk to you know technical people they'll say that devops is is actually you know a 
a tool tool and technology shop which is wrong that perception is changing but it all started that way you know dev and ops team wanted to work together they created few tools they put that tools in their continuous delivery pipeline and then you know it, uh, most of the people started to think that you know devops is a uh, tool or technology shop uh, so it is not that but i mean without it devops can't really happen when you talk about continuous you talk about uh, you know 50 times deployment a week you need to have some tools some uh, you know some technologies so so let's understand and that is one of the key section of today's presentation how we can understand those technologies in a very simple terms so i have created two frameworks for devops uh, and again when you talk to others or when you you know read in other books the frameworks may be slightly different uh one have created a conceptual view and one have created a kind of a technical view and if you can just keep these two frameworks along with the definition these two frameworks in your mind i think that is sufficient enough to start the journey on a devops or have a you know good conversation with 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 anybody so first framework the conceptual view of the framework is and a lot of things you know the similar even safe also has a similar where they say continuous exploration as one of their phase Uh, so again it's not that you know everything is is very uh, i've created from scratch but i've taken inspirations from uh, from several sources uh, so continuous business needs how uh, and it is uh, uh, in what ways we can continuously discover what business requires you know maybe through the design thinking sessions or from the workshop or from the user surveys personas empathy maps whatever but uh, how we can continuously discover the business needs so that is one thing and it is not just business needs it's the stakeholder needs a new regulation is coming how can you be ready before your product you know goes live into the market the next is a more of a technical uh, which is continuous integration i hope the people who are online they are able to uh rich can you see the yes we right now we had like a 5 second outage but we're back okay you're spinning again Hi everyone. We're working out the technical difficulties. Unless they're me only. Hi. I can see the room. I can see movement in the room. I can be heard with online people, but the virtual meeting. Let's see here. Yeah, the virtual meeting's working okay. There was a problem with that one feed. Okay, I'm checking with status from people that are in the room. There we go. Take. I think we've got you back. We have your slide up. All right, and I'm also all set. <laughs> Very good. Good to go. Thank you. So uh, I was talking about continuous delivery, but versus continuous deployment. So there are different school of thoughts. Few people say that continuous delivery is not actually handing over to the end user, and few people say that continuous deployment is not actually handing over to the people. So continuous delivery is a production-like environment. not exactly production and and continuous deployment is actually production but safe has a different take so think of the example from amazon that uh... 
sorry, just go back. Ridge, can you pull up the slides again? Oh, thank you. No, wrong thing. Yeah, wrong slide. Sorry, Ridge. Ridge, can you still hear us? Presentation slide. Rich, can you still hear us? I can. Uh, I'm not in the presentation slide uh, in the menu. Okay, could you pull the slides up again? Sorry. Yes, working on it. Uh, I've got it. It's coming up. Where were we? Here. How's this looking, Pratik? Good. And Pratik, if you want to go with next slide and have me move them for you, happy to. Yep. Yeah. I think it's uh, so. Is it is it visible uh, for people in room? Not. Let me see how. Okay, we have a full screen option. That was. That is not. Trying to update it on my end. Sorry. No. Here we go. That was a good slide. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to uh, skip few few thoughts over here. And uh, the next is the on-release demand. So whenever your user needs, do you have a capability to uh, to actually release it? And continuous learning, continuous improvement is again a general standard items. But the reason it is important to understand this conceptual view that when you talk about somebody around DevOps, ask these questions. You know, how we are exploring the business needs continuously, how we are integrating. If you have a team sitting here, team sitting at offshore, different developers, different technology, different vendors, what is that approach? How you are continuously deploying and what is your on demand release? So you have a say FDA approval coming on 1st of uh, July and uh, you have to launch a product, uh, a, a, a maybe a patient support, some, some kind of a digital app on say uh, 6th of July. So are you ready whenever it is needed? And you never know when the FDA approval will come, right? For example. So is on-demand release a, a capability or not? So these are kind of a powerful question as a leader you can ask. Okay, but if you are really into more, more into technology, this is a good DevOps framework technical view as well. There's nothing in DevOps which will go beyond this technical view and I'll quickly cover it. Uh, the second uh, row, this is exactly what we discussed, you know, your uh, CI, CD pipelines, how you continuously, you know, find the business requirement, ethics feature stories, source control, build and practice, that is all integration, then your uh, deployment and your delivery. We talked about it, right? Those continuous uh, conceptual view. But as I said, there are a lot of things happening in DevOps. One thing is the communication and collaboration stories. And as per your role, your experience, your interest, you may find your place anywhere in a large organization. You may say that I am an expert on uh, you know, communication and collaboration when it comes to DevOps. I don't know technology, but I know those tools, the ways of working of those tools, which will improve the communication and collaboration. Or this logging, uh, we mentioned one of the dimension was measurement, right? Measurement cannot come if you don't have a data. So this logging, telemetry, and monitoring strategy that also can be one of the place where you can, if you are really into data and analytics, this is one place in the DevOps where you would probably want to go. The, the bottom two are more of a horizontals in a large organizations. So whatever your product and platform strategy, so that is one thing, uh, you know, which is definitely a part of DevOps uh, technical view, uh, DevOps framework technical view and security and compliance. Many organizations now have a separate, just like quality is traditionally a separate uh, you know, reporting structure, separate organization. Now, information security is also becoming a separate uh, horizontal or a separate business area in organizations. So this is where, you know, your security and compliance strategy. So it may be a local compliance, which is very specific to your project, 
or it may be a, a enterprise wide compliance but all those things come into uh, into devops one thing on purpose i missed in this which uh, anybody who knows devops might have observed continuous testing and continuous security so like devsecops so uh, the reason i missed it that that is everywhere even if your uh, requirements are not clear some you have to do some kind of a testing whether the requirements are not exactly testing testing but kind of a verification your requirements are correct or not and security is also everywhere and that is where i tend to agree with safe if you go to safe devops framework they say security is everywhere and your uh, testing is also everywhere and uh, this year's uh, state of devops made an interesting point that why devops ecops come into picture these days you have chat ops you have pin ops you have ai ops git ops there are so many things happening but in large organizations uh, and i don't know if true or not but security project tend to get funding easy you know as compared to your business if you say okay there is a vulnerability there is a threat so there is a more focus more budget so that is another reason dev secops is growing as a separate thing but at the end of the day when you say devops it assumes that security is in bit so just a little reference i wanted to cover so we have a few minutes left so so did i say tool and technology and i just put this image to scare you uh, you can go to landscape uh, we'll share the link later but as of and this is on a 60% zoom right so we have around 1200 devops tools available in market and uh, uh, even when i was creating this slide many of the uh, you know tools i was uh, you know hearing first time but that message which i have written is is important it's 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 limitless you know if somebody says i know devops tools just don't select that person you know <laughs> so that is one thing so nobody can understand all and everywhere i bet wherever i have worked the tool set is entirely different everywhere it is different but with the involvement structure you know the the technical view which i shared you can actually it's easy to easy to understand each tool uh, the you can't really see but you know there is a category of each tool so if your interest is in the collaboration strategy you can just click on that filter and learn about those tools so that will not make you like Um, not take a lot of time also, but you will have some understanding of the you know DevOps, and that was is that is the main intent of this session. How you approach those tools? So first, define your bucket. You want to into the product platform, security, collaboration, integration, whatever. Then there are tools available, the portals available in market where you can just simply apply a filter, and you know just learn about those tools. But even a better way than highly, I highly recommend that there is a thing called DevOps periodic table. if you just google super interactive very very good tool so for example my interest is in uh, say cloud so if you click on the cloud only the cloud uh, uh, tools will come and you can just hover your mouse and you know learn about it it's and they are just continuously updating it i use it a lot and i highly recommend that focus on what is your area uh, even in the agile planning you know those kind of things if you are not into technology it's a really good tool to to go through yeah uh, i actually wanted to spend more time on this slide but as a project manager as a leader you know what are some of the common themes which uh, i say continuously involved you know so there are three things definitely if you do uh, that will make you continuously involved first as soon as you land into a project which is using devops talk about collaboration ask them where are your artifacts right how you are what are your repository repositories what is the dependency between those repositories what are different forums you may have maybe it's a communities of practice maybe it's a knowledge session whatever forums are there and just so that is one theme if you focus on the collaboration based on these pointers that is uh, a good uh, you know common theme of involvement second is data uh, so you might have you know the gated approach right so if, uh, so some of the tools what they do that Uh, if uh, there is a approval pending right so automatically it, it will start generating data that okay for a deployment you are waiting for a, a quality teams approval and that approval has not come and it will give you that aggregated dashboard so every single tool have this data thing the every single tool which is on the periodic table they have good dashboards good customization which you can do and a notification system subscription system and also a workflow with whom it is pending so as a project management professional or a leader 
uh, moment you see a tool, see where the data is stored, the data is stored, and what kind of insights and dashboard that tool is giving. So collaboration we talk, data we talk, and the last one is the backlog, because DevOps is a journey. If you land into a DevOps project as a project leader or whatever, it is your responsibility to mature that as well. So uh, I have worked on a couple of assign assignments where we have created a separate backlog for DevOps maturity only. Okay, today we are only automating say notifications. Tomorrow we want to also notification automate build. So those kind of a things we need to add into the uh, uh, you know kind of a backlog. So collaboration, data, and backlog. If you can focus on these three themes for any tool or technology, I think that uh, would be a good uh, you know good uh, continuous involvement start on on DevOps. And this, I think you can see in the recording, we don't have a lot of time, but sometimes uh, you may have to report DevOps itself. So, so far we were discussing that, you know, you're doing a project in DevOps and how you will work on that project, what you need to know. But sometimes there's a ask that because DevOps is a journey, how the adoption of the DevOps in, across the organization is, you, it, that may be one of your role. So what kind of a metrics you will track? So there are primarily across the industry, three buckets, speed, quality and stability but i highly recommend don't if if anybody asks you a question that what metrics we can use that question itself is wrong they should ask what metric should be designed because for every enterprise metrics are different but they would be kind of a permutation and combination of speed quality and uh, stability i think we'll just not go into all the list but this is some of the things which you can refer and i believe they can get the slide or recording uh, <coughs> Yeah, so just uh, before I open for questions, uh, I know it was uh, on, a, on a high speed, but uh, today was a tip, but there's an iceberg also, you know, which you can, uh, uh, you know, explore. So today we discuss overview of DevOps, uh, what is the importance of continuously involved and, you know, technology landscape. But tomorrow or whenever you have time, the iceberg, I would, the way to tackle the iceberg is that framework which, uh, which I shared, conceptual and technical, just take one block. Don't focus on everything. Take one block and check uh, wherever your interest is and check with your teams on those three themes, collaboration, data, and backlog. So you have a block, you have themes, and then go to DevOps periodic table to learn about you know, those tools, whichever tools are there in, in your organization. There's another, so DevOps periodic table is one resource. DevOpsChecklist.com is also another great resource, which has around 40 points primarily around other dimensions like you know your culture your lean your measurement so uh, if you really have to land into a devops conference if you go through that devopstechnics.com i think it, it's a very quick start to understand a lot and then as we always say just write top three items which you want to do and discuss with your team and put into practice okay so that's all i wanted to share today Oh, thank you. I'm open for questions. Hi, for taking, uh, marching online for questions. We don't have any yet. I have some questions, but why don't we go to the in-person uh, yeah. folks there? Is, is anybody there? I'd like to offer the, the podium yes. to somebody there for a question. Yeah, I had a question, Rich. Just a quick question. Um, what was the what was the website for the periodic? Uh, yeah, it's, it's called Digitate. Uh, but if you Google with DevOps periodic uh, table, it will come. Okay, thank you. Yeah, there are several positive comments about the periodic table uh, in our yeah. chat yeah. as well. For take a question I have, uh, I've been I've been trained as have many people are trained in or uh, certainly aware of ITIL or IT service management to use a, a broader term. Uh, how do you reconcile it'll IT service management? How do you reconcile that with DevOps? Right. So that's a very interesting question. It always comes into conversation in large enterprises. You know, we have IT is working fine. You know, why we need DevOps? And my earlier part of my career, I was you know in IT service management. So I would say IT IL has lived and will live. It's not going anywhere. But it is about making your you know solid uh, state service the, your service design service operations um, in fact i was in one of the conversation with one of the customer and uh, the outcome there was a similar discussion there are three things which 
we should do for ITIR for each process. Take each process. First is uh, remove the manual steps. So that is number one thing which we have to do. And second is uh, uh, automate it. What, no, so those are same. Second is make it lean. So if there is a, so when ITIL started, uh, there was no focus on, you know, removing the wastage, making it lean. They just wanted to make it solid, make it stable. So that is second. And third is a very interesting concept called capture to comply. Rather than worrying about that people are not following the processes, SLAs are missed, why don't build those dash dashboards, create those notification system. So uh, there's a saying that, right, it is easier to ask for, uh, you know, for uh, forgiveness uh, rather than permission. So capture those, those mistakes and then act on it. So if you do these three things on each ITIL process, I think your ITIL would be uh, uh, more complementary to DevOps. And interestingly, ITIL 4, it's all about, so whatever you read in ITIL 4, if you have done the scrum classes or the safe classes, it will resonate. They're talking about value, they're talking about faster feedback loop. So I think they are complementary uh, to each other and they will live uh, together happily ever after. <laughs> Great, thank you for that, that answer. Um, Early on in the slide that you had, you, you, it was a simple slide uh, early on, waterfall, agile, DevOps, and you talked about the, the pace of delivery with DevOps being con continuous. Um, what came to my mind there that I wonder about when we're talking about this particular slide that's up now, um, is this a case where you know waterfall can be managed as a project, but are we actually converting the work so that's really more of a process? And so should we be using and or focusing or thinking about this more as a continuous process that we're trying to manage rather than a discrete project? And there, there at least have been differences of definitions and differences in the techniques you would use depending upon how you want to arrange your work. How do you, how do you comment about uh, uh, on thoughts like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, if we generically use the word process, people have a different uh, you know, opinion. That process is something which is just to, uh, uh, you know, ensure something. That is why you put put a process. But I think if you go from the continuous sense of it, that uh, you know, process is something which which no matter what kind of a project comes or what kind of a product comes, your process will always be there. So from that angle, I think uh, I agree with you. You know, we are making it more of a uh, process uh, to to continuously deliver rather than just focusing on one particular project. I'm not sure whether I got the question correctly, but that is my comment on, on that. It's, yeah, to me at least, it's a pretty deep question for me to, to be thinking about. We do have an yeah. online, and then I'd like to return and check with people in the room. Uh, there's a bit of setup here, but the question is really the bottom three lines. And I, I wonder about this too, because I do work in organizational change management as well. But what are techniques for OCM that then are new or necessary for implementing DevOps, because if things are changing continuously on people, that provides a, a new and intriguing challenge. Yeah, I think uh, it all uh, boils down to that, uh, uh, the very first block, uh, communication and collaboration strategy. So that is really important uh, 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 in, in my opinion. One of the things which, uh, um, and it is, it is not, it's just one of the pointer in OCM, but it is around roles and responsibility. And that is what I have seen being a project manager, project leader. One of the biggest challenges which I have seen is uh, you know, maintaining the roles and responsibility. Devel you are now say asking developer also to work with operations team. Things are overlapping. Then how exactly you will define the roles and responsibility. So one of the activities which we did with one of the customer was uh, typically how we do it, right? We go to a person, can you write your responsibility? But we did both the ways. So in the room, everybody would write some of the responsibilities, which may be the expectations also, right? So uh, I'm writing my responsibility, but somebody is writing my responsibilities as well. So that is ensure that, you know, there's a good alignment. It's a good, it's kind of a team building activities also. So that is only one of the pointer in OCM, but I think these kind of little things which you do, which sounds informal, that would help in the overall OCM. All righty. Uh, let me return to folks that are in the room. Is there another question, perhaps, from around the, the U-shaped table? Any questions or any comments uh, on the conversation today? 
For take one more from me here. I've run across this term recently, and I'm kind of wondering how to reconcile it. Is, is somebody trying to further DevOps into something else? What is how is DevSecOps different from DevOps outside the fact that it has the letters SEC in the middle of it? Right, yeah. So uh, I think I briefly touched on this one. So, uh, um, so DevOps, so many versions of DevOps are coming, but when, so the main question is, is faster safe? You know, uh, you have Tesla, you know, on a, uh, you know, or you are, you are going on a car with, uh, with, with this much of a speed is fast safe. That is the main question which the leaders want to ask. And that question actually brings security into pictures. So, so that's where DevSecOps can picture. So teams, I just want to deliver, deliver, or, uh, you know, deliver. So whether that is safe, that is secure, that is as per compliance and standards. So this is the, uh, reason security come into picture, but. Uh, everybody, uh, most of the people now are saying that, you know, uh, there are biz DevOps also where you, your focus is on continuously discovering the business needs. So, and there is a, there's a chat ops also where your focus is on the collaboration. So I think security is just embedded across the DevOps, but because there's a more focus on security because it's a, you know, cyber world. So that's why, you know, it's, it's getting more popularity in general, but security is everywhere in DevOps. Thank you, Pratik, for that. Appreciate it. Pratik, we're going to enter into a networking segment of this event. Are you going to be able to hang around in the room there for to participate in our little networking session over the next 30 minutes or so? Yep. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, I want to thank everybody for attending. And there's the PDU code that's there as well. Pratik, thank you very much for <laughs> just saying that for a second. We've got, got something special for you here. There we go. I have it electronically. Um, we'd like you to accept this certificate of appreciation autographed by a couple of our board members that you've met uh, recently. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we have a version. Yep, there it is. Take one with you. <laughs> you could take a picture of that too. Uh, and we really appreciate it. Everybody join me in thanking Pratik for his presentation today. I was focusing on the picture first, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. And now, may I scan the room and ask that Mr. Dan Stevens please approach the podium? Mr. Dan Stevens, approach the podium. Uh, because uh, it's it's this time. <laughs> Don't adjust your computers, everybody. It's supposed to sound that bad. All righty. Dan Stevens, do we have do we have to do somewhere in sight? There, Dan Stevens. Dan Stevens, welcome. Dan Stevens is our special guest today for our uh, uh, volunteer mini podcast. Dan, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Let's see. Okay, we changed the viewpoint there. Dan, how are you? And uh, geez, how long have you been a project manager? We'd like to get to know our volunteers a little bit. Well, I'm doing okay. I've been a project manager for 20 years or so. Before that, I was in engineering and development. Um, got my uh, PMP, I think, uh, just about 20 years ago. Okay. Wow. Okay. Great. So, uh, right now, are you currently working with an employer, or are you uh, hanging out your shingle? You're available to work. What's your status? Well, it's a combination. I'm working for. Uh, an automation company based in San Jose, California, where so I'm doing uh, a customer interface and some documentation and and uh, that sort of thing at you know here in Indiana. Cool. Uh, hey, how long have you been volunteering for the PMI chapter? <laughs> volunteering for PMI or volunteering in general? Uh, oh. Let's start with PMI and then I'd like the other. EMI has been about 20 years. Uh, uh, well, I mean, the, all of PMI is, a, is it's driven by the volunteer work. We wouldn't exist without the volunteer work. You volunteer for other organizations too, Dan. It seems like you're a, a service-oriented uh, leader. Oh, yeah, yeah. Girl Scouts even, uh, swing teams, soccer teams. I officiate, I officiated for uh, Michael Phelps. Cool. 
Hey, what's your current volunteer role with PMI, with the chapter here? Uh, well, I'm in facilities and uh, speaker, speaker acquisition. All right, looking forward to the next speakers that we're getting over the coming months. Uh, given your volunteer experience and your obvious support for volunteerism, what words of encouragement do you have, Dan, for other project managers that are considering a volunteer opportunity? Well, volunteering with an organization like PMI uh, allows you to dig deeper into each function. Uh, you know, getting ready for these meetings, it's a complex thing. You know, we walk in, we get our, our dinner and cookies and soda <laughs> and but uh, the, the work behind this is, is complex the, the technology the the, uh, the logistics the you know contracting the, the facility so if you volunteer on that sort of thing you learn that and you appreciate it more uh the speaker acquisition which i did a lot of that, that, that is no walk in the park either and um being a volunteer you you walk in and you volunteer for something and you you know, you got all these expectations, which never get met. But then you realize, oh my goodness, this is what these other people have been doing all this time. So yeah, it's it's a, it's an eye opener, and it's I think it it then then the people like ourselves who, who volunteer pass that on to other people, and the overall impact of that I hope is an overall improvement in the entire organization. Dan, as a fellow volunteer, you know, what you just said speaks great truth. I appreciate your perspective there. I, I have felt several times during the course of this event that this, this event has been exercising DevOps without intentionally declaring it. Dan, I have one last question for you that's really, really important. Um, Cabernet or pick Moscato? Oh, Moscato. The Moscato? I will send... I, I've, uh, I've fermented both of these. Uh, I'll set one aside 